Hello all, and welcome to Let's Play Ultima 5. We're looking for Terence in the orchards. Since Gweno wants to speak to him. And here I thought thou wert going to ask for a song. Nobody was going to ask you for a song. Sorry, I'm getting a little uh, tetchy with Yolo continually going. Uh, um. And oh, I thought. Of course, Avatar. Of course, I'm getting fed up with you. You say it all the time. I mean, I could switch off the, you know, the, the dialogue. Who's this? Somebody's, somebody's fighting someone. Okay, let's carry on exploring. Where's the orchard? She said it was the northeast, didn't she? That's the graveyard. Probably not. Here it is, the royal orchard. Village Tarantella, I believe is the name of this tree. And this must be Terence. Hello, Terence. It's a man wearing faded, dirty coveralls and a warm smile with several gaps in it. He tugs a forelock in greeting to you as you approach. Good eye, my lord. What's your name? Terence, my lord. What's your job? Well, care for these fine orchards, my lord. I fertilise them with fertiliser, I hope. Prune them, harvest them, and guard them from thieves. It is a humble life, but it suiteth me. Humble? Tis a struggle to make ains meet some days. Dost thou then have enough to eat? Oh, yes, we do. Excellent to hear. Let's talk about the dark times, then. What dark times? Thou hast no, no doubt heard of the Shadow Lords. I had heard of evils that they had done to men who crossed their paths, but I did not know what they could wither, that they could wither crops by their touch until they paid an unwanted visit to mine orchard. Really, what did they get up to? took me months to nurse the orchard back to health after that night. I know not what I would have done had the resistance not offered to help me in, my, in the meantime. The resistance, you say? Oh, now you've done it, Terence. All right then, my lord. Art thou going to go to the oppression and turn me in? No. Tell us more about the resistance. We want to join La Resistance. Oh, I thank thee. Dost thou know of the resistance? No. Ah, I suggest thou seekest out Chamfort and you then. He is the owner of the arms of justice, and could point thee to those who could teach thee. Why well, thank thee, but Lord British said to he has tasted no finer fruits in all of Britannia. But the work is hard, it is even harder in these dark times. Yes, I know, you want me to ask about the dark times, don't you? He was not one just he was not just a king of the people, my lord. He was a king of our hearts. I mean, he made a point to take long walks with me in the orchard, keeping a close eye on the state of the trees and the land here, always asking me questions about the effects of the latest drought or flood on the trees. No, he was a king of the land, and he will be sorely missed. I think they're going for the Arthurian connection here. You know, the land. <clears throat> we get more than our share of hungry birds and thieving scoundrel children. But I look on it as a compliment. To have so many who wish to steal the fruits of my labour, I must be doing well in my duties. I... All right, tell me about the children. Aye, oh, scoundrels! They are right to call me the boogeyman. Anyway, I always seem to know just where and where, how they are sneaking in. One would think that I had been the same when I was a child. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Safe journeys, my lord. Okay. Well, Gweno didn't say anything there. Okay. Well, I thought she might have had something to say. But obviously, that was a clue to get me to go and. Uh, Talk to him so I could find out about La Resistance. Just give me a moment. Oh, somebody shoot him. Okay. Hey, it's a kid. Hello, kitty. Perhaps a verse and here I thought stones. thou wert going to ask for a song. Avatar must be closer to talk. Yolo, no speaky English. Of course, Avatar. Come back. Mm, good grief. We just want to talk to you. You see a small, wild-haired young girl with red-rimmed eyes. What? What's your name? The girl shrugs, not bothering to keep eye contact. Gweno steps forward, crouching before the girl. Shivin, what's the matter? They'll come back. They always some come back. She begins to sway. I want to talk about Sylvie, about Shivin. I've been meaning to. Okay, we're just going to replay that dialogue. So you're called Shivan, are you? Make them go away. The hoods. I see dead people. I will show thee something. 
The girl glances about to make sure no eyes are about, then reaches into a pocket under the arm of her nightgown. She's wearing a nightgown during the day? She shows you some sketches. With a dark sea at the bottom and a town before a castle, it is apparently Brittany Bay. Castle Britannia stands much larger than proper scale, taking up half the page. But above Britain is what appears to be a black smudge. Then she has marked two red dots that resemble eyes in the midst of it. This is where I go, she says, pointing at the castle. To the king's house. This is why I go, she continues, pointing at the red-eyed shadow shape. There are three Avatar. You have to make them go away. Do you know what else? No. The king's house is safe, but there is a bad man inside. I've seen him at night, when he leaves a light on. She abruptly folds up her paper and tucks it back into her pocket and waves her hand in a quick beckon. As you bend to meet her, she cups your face in both hands and kisses your cheek. A tear collects in the corner of Shivan's eye, but she raises a grimy hand to pluck it free. She smiles suddenly, a child bright with playful hope, but an instant later her face falls and she looks down, withdrawing into herself. Okay, she sees dead people. What's your job, anyway? Ask Mummy. Shivan, what's the matter? They'll come back. They always come back. Okay. Let... Who's your mummy? Mummy makes clothes. This is Sylvie's daughter, Yolo offers. Perhaps we should speak to her and not trouble the child. Okay. Let's... That's a bit disturbing that this kid is seeing dead people. Where's the tailor? It will be Where's the done. tailor, Yolo? Why don't you tell me? Why do I always have to stumble around looking for things? That's a tailor. Or a clothier. Hello. Let's go pay her a visit. It will be done. Ooh, swamp boots. A handsome middle-aged woman with perhaps too much makeup greets you with a practiced smile. Welcome, dears. What can I do for thee? What's thy name? Call me Sylvie, dear. She smiles patient as ever. Yolo steps forward. Greetings, ma'am. My lord, goodness me! She gives him a motherly hug and kiss on the cheek. Hast thou found Lord British then? Uh, not yet, but we expect we shall anon. He clasps you on the shoulder. The Avatar has returned, and though I trust thee to be careful of whom thou tellest of this. The Avatar? Well, this is certainly of great import, that thou hast brought the Avatar into Britain town. I am no fortune teller, so I cannot say whether it's a good or a bad omen. Aye, and don't ask me why I'm risking my life for the Avatar, Gweno pipes up, for I only say it is a foolish question. <sighs> Sylvie hesitates only briefly before laughing and embracing Gweno. We all do what we must, child. Try to keep thyself safe. Look, I, I mean to speak to you about your rather mentally disturbed daughter. Only just turned six. I bring her to work with me most of the time, as I have yet to find a proper school for her. But I confess that she doth wander off from time to time. She was such a sweet babe, but recently... She breaks off. I beg thy pardon, Sylvie, but Shivan is not my daughter. I, but I'm concerned for her. What dost thou mean, Gweno? That I cannot care for my own daughter? No, that's not what I mean. Thou makest too much of our sensibilities. The Avatar asked about Shivan, and I am merely echoing the question. What's troubling her? Oh, I, I, I wish I knew. Oh, bless me, I do not wish I knew. She will not tell me. I only noticed the change in her shortly after Lord British was reported missing. I can only assume he misses her. she misses him terribly, as we all do. Shivan used to draw pictures, but one day she took them all away, and I heard tell of her tearing them to bits and casting them into the bay. I have not seen her draw since. Perhaps perhaps you could help her avatar. I know thou canst, if it's in anyone's power to find Lord British and put all our hearts at ease. Let's talk about recently. She frightens easily, and speaks of horrible dreams, my lord. I wish I could take her away from her. I wish I could take them away from her, but I shall not trouble thee with such talk. Thou canst merely find her if thou call her by name. Uh, call me Sylvie, dear. Besides running a clothing shop, thou meanest? Why, I only do what I can to keep Britain town falling from flying apart, and tis a lot between my two children and my friends that thou art in the presence of a viceroy. A viceroy? I did not mean it seriously. Idle spin of a silk spinner. Our Lord Mayor does, well, he does his job, and I do mine. Well, let's talk about this Mayor. I have held my tongue on matters of state, but tis a common view that we are better off with Lord British, not only because he ruled from the heart of the lands, rather than off in the sea somewhere. 
Lord Petter is a compassionate man. Okay, let's have a look at her shop. Uh, she's selling clothes. Okay. Well, we've investigated the disturbed child, and I guess we have to free Lord British if we're going to do anything about that. So, let's take a break, and we'll resume shortly. <laughs>